So good morning. Welcome to the Humanist Community in Silicon Valley Sunday Forum. My name is Matt Courtney. I'm the recorder and a member of the board of the Humanist Community. The Humanist Community is a chapter of the American Humanist Association. Humanism is a reality-based philosophy of life that affirms our ability and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good. We value freedom, health, happiness, fairness, compassion, and using science and reason to acquire and apply knowledge. If these words describe your thinking, we invite you to become a member of the humanist community if you've not already done so. Membership forms are available on our website at humanists.org. If you are listening for the first time, welcome, and we invite you to continue listening to our weekly forums and other events. You can find all our events listed on the website, humanists.org. Please aid us in continuing to present these forums by donating to the humanist community. You can find out how to donate to our organization, again, on the website, humanists.org. Also, usually our treasurer joins us a little bit later and posts info on how to mail donations to us. Uh, John Albach will talk to, uh, talk to us about his work uh, with support groups for people who stutter. So John should be able to unmute yourself now. And go ahead and start the presentation. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, Alex told me I was, uh, I talked to your group 10 year, years ago in, um, in Sunnyvale, I, I guess. Um, if you were there for that, um, for that uh, talk, um, I think things really haven't changed much. <laughs> so it's pretty much the same uh, information I'm gonna be uh, putting out and my, my relationship with the uh, stuttering and the stuttering community hasn't uh, hasn't changed much either. I, I'd like to, you know, I'll, I'll put out um, what I can, but I'd like to save a lot of time to answer any quick questions you have. Um, I think that'd be the best way for us to, you know, for us to pr proceed if we're, you know, if I'm answering uh, any, any questions you, you, you might uh, have. Uh, let, let me ask it. Let me ask you your question to start off. Um, this is a pretty astute astute group, um, so uh, I think that your your answers will be much different than uh, ones you might get if you stop somebody on on the street. And uh, let me ask you, what do you think causes people to stutter? Uh, why don't you type your answers in in the chat? Not to me, but to so. It, everyone can see it. What do you think causes somebody to stutter? Uh, about 1% one, 1 of the adult population of the world uh, to stutters. Uh, we have a hand up from uh, Dan and Jerry. Did you want to take that question? No, I, uh, oh, okay. yeah, if, if you want, sure. Dana, well, or you can put it in the chat or you can say it, whatever. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, I guess I was wondering whether um, it was principally a, 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 a physical disability or neurological problem. What do you think? Psychological problem. What do you think? Uh, well, I don't know very much about it. And I don't really know anybody who has this well, disability. Well, what's, what's your instinct? Well, what what's I'm, your gut tell I'm, you? That um, it's a, a, phys, a neurological predisposition that's activated by psychological factors. Okay, anyone else? Bra brain issues, um, uh, stage, stage, stage fright. Uh, Chip, I think you hit the, na the uh, nail on the head. Um, it, it, uh, people look at somebody who stutters and they, they see somebody struggling, they see somebody who's nervous, who's anxious perhaps. Um, they see us uh, running out of breath. Um, they see our lips uh, qu 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 quivering. Um, so they tend to focus on you know what we're feeling or um, the, you know the the larynx, the mouth, the tongue, or whatever. Some uh, uh, Prussian 
doctor in the 19th century had the great idea that um, the tongue was too large in people <laughs> who stutter. So he, uh, he chopped off a, a portion of it uh, for some poor, poor guys. Uh, but, you know, um, Dana, you're, you're right. You know, it, it, there is a, it, 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 there is a predi predisposition to stutter. And it does have to do with the brain, uh, which controls everything we do. Um, the, um, everything we know about stuttering points, points to that. It's a neurological uh, pr pr problem, but it hasn't been un understood like that. Although about 10 years ago, the, the case was really closed because the NIH or somebody uh, actually found the gene. They actually found the gene uh, in whatever you know those million chromosomes are um, that um, causes somebody to stutter. We've we've known we've known it runs in families forever. Lewis Carroll had not had like ten people in his family, and not, not nine of them stuttered. Um, the uh, in in my own family, if you have if you're male and have dark, dark hair in my family, you stutter. I have one brother who takes his features from my mother's side of the family, and he's the only one that doesn't stutter. And there are cousins on my father's side who do. Um, take the case of identical twin. If one identical twin stutters, the chances are 80% that the other will stutter. If a regular sibling, if they're, um, if they're, if they're fraternal twins, the chances are about 20, about 20%. Uh, the gender ratio and stuttering also points towards a neurological um, cause because like every other neurological problem, dyslex dyslexia, dysgraphia, boys outnumber girls about five to one. You know, um, and that probably has to do with the fact that uh, stuttering, it, it has to do with the brain. And, and you know, we have a, you know, obviously the left hemisphere and the right, right hemisphere and, um, in people who stutter, that the the hemisphere, either the right or the left, is is too much involved in in speaking, and and you know when you look at little at little kids, and the other thing is stuttering doesn't start when you're a teenager and is or asking somebody out out for a date, it always starts before before school. Um, my own son began to stutter when he was two, which is pretty young. Uh, I started to notice I stuttering when I, I stuttered when I was about four. So it always starts in child, childhood. Um, if you, and, and often about, I don't know, 75% of kids will stutter somewhat like my son and they'll just uh, de develop out of it. Probably because the, um, it has to do with the brain, uh, you know, girls, Girls achieve brain to dominance way before boys do. You look at a five-year-old girl, you know, she's jumping off the monkey bars and doing these incredibly sophisticated physical acts, right? Boys can hardly walk and chew, chew gum when they're five, five years old, but they catch up later because the brain dominance sets, sets in. About the age of seven, uh, if you take this, the, the, the rule is if you take the stuttering to school with you, the chances are good you're going to stutter for the rest of your life. Um, it is a, it's a neurological chronic pro 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 problem. And you know, what's also odd about it is it really has nothing to do with how we talk. It has to do with how we hear ourselves. Well, hearing ourselves is part of speaking, right? You know, it, it's a feedback loop. We talk, we hear ourselves, and in, in these milli, mini seconds, microseconds, the brain pro pro process assesses speech. Well, in people who stutter, this tends to, tends to be a delay in how we hear ourselves. So that um, there's, the speech breaks, breaks, breaks down. Um, if, um, if I would talk like this, I wouldn't stutter because it tends to break down the whatever delay there might there might be. Um, there's a 
device that will, it's called the um, delayed auditory feedback device. And it does just that. Um, there's another device that actually um, pretty much has you talk with yourself. That's the other thing that's odd. Um, you don't talk when you're alone. If I'm walking in the woods somewhere and I'm, you know, reciting a poem that I, I like very much, there is no way in the world I'm going to stutter. And it really has nothing to do with the fact that I'm alone and, and not feeling, you know, it, it, it's just the brain is working in a different, in a different way, you know, then. Um, also, I don't, um, you know, I don't stutter if people don't, people don't stutter if they're talking in chorus with somebody else. Uh, you and I, like, I, I never had to worry about saying, uh, you know, growing up a, a, a Catholic and teaching in a, a Catholic school, if I led the class in prayer, there's no way I'm going to stutter. It just doesn't happen. If I'm talking in chorus with somebody else, the stuttering do doesn't exist. It's very odd. Well, anyway. In fact, you can, you could take, I wish I could show you, you could take two people and have them re read a, a, a passage of a hundred words, say. Um, I know people who might take an hour to get through that. Um, you could take two, two people who would, you know, just spend most of the morning trying to get those wor wor words out. And, and instead of this, so that stuttering does exist in that severity. Yet if those two people read that thing together in chorus, they wouldn't stutter at all. Because the brain is a, because the brain's working in a different in a different way. You're hearing yourself in a different a different way. What's also um, very evident, uh, very uh, very much a part of the um, uh, stuttering problem, and also I think uh, probably every other problem we have. Um, there's a biorhythmic uh, quality to it. Um, if, uh, I, I know there I'm having, I know, you know, I know if I'm having a good day or a bad day. And right now I'd say I'm, on a scale of one to 10, I'm probably a seven, you know, today isn't a, a bad day. Um, but, um, uh, other times, especially if I'm sick, I have a cold, um, setting would be a lot, a lot worse. If I, if I get drunk, Alex might testify to this. We, we lived together for a while. Um, you know, if I get drunk, my speech just go, 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 goes to hell. Um, the, um, uh, but, and it, it's also, uh, I, I've never ch charted it, but my, my um, suspicion is that if I did chart, you know, how my stuttering is doing, it would follow a very clear 30-day rhythm. You know, probably in a 30 day period, I'd be, you know, have good days and it would, you know, uh, I'd have really good days and really bad days. Because uh, men, men go through hormonal cycles too, I understand. Every woman, I've, I don't ask them this, uh, but I, I've, I've met thousands of people who stutter. I, I don't know if there's anyone, I probably met more people who stutter than almost anyone on the planet. And women will often have, have shared, shared with me that they can tell exactly where they are in their menstrual cycle um, based on what their stuttering is, is, is doing. So there's a really physical, physical aspect to it, both in it, its cause, of course, and then um, how you deal with, with it. And the severity, um, Severity doesn't always measure what, um, how the problem's going to dictate, is going to, um, what role it's going to play in your life. I've, um, I picked up the phone at the, I was director of the National Stuttering Project for 15 years. Um, I loved, lo 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 loved it. And I, at the end of that time, my board of directors and I, I'm sure you've had this experience. Um, 
in nonprofit groups, often the board of directors and the executive director often don't see eye to eye and the executive director often loses and which I did. So I had to leave, but, um, I picked up the phone twice in the office and listened to five minutes of dead su 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 silence on the other end of the line. I don't mean about five minutes. I timed it on my watch. And then I heard this, um, this awful click at the end. I, <laughs> it, it could have been the same person calling each time, but I, 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 I don't know. You know, and there are other people who you might not even know they stutter because they will do anything, anything to avoid letting you know that they stutter. Anything. I, when I was growing up, I would do anything. Uh, I was good in school. I was good in sports and I was good in school, but I never raised my hand unless I was sure I could say so, so something. And I, I hit out, you know. Everybody knew that I stuttered, but nobody ever, even my brothers and I, we never talked about it with my family. My mother was the most sympathetic, caring person alive. And the stuttering was there, but I didn't want to talk, talk about it. And she didn't either. I just wanted to just kind of wish the thing away because it, you know, it came and went. Some days it was good, some days it was bad, some days I get stuck. But I'd, you know, learn to avoid certain certain words. I hated to say San Francisco, S -S 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 of course. Um, so I moved to Pacifica. No, but you know that, that sounds that sounds funny. But I, I know. Listen, I know people who change their names. I have one really good friend. <laughs> she she always had to remember if she, you know, saw a guy twice in the bar in a bar, you know, at, on Friday night when people didn't, you know, people actually met in bars. Uh, she had to remember what she was calling herself the last time um, she talked to, to talk to this, this, this guy, you know, you, you learn to eat things that you can say. I can never say, I could never say bourbon. I wanted a bourbon and water, but I could never say it. So I get so, 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 something else. Um, you know, the avoidance can be extreme. You have a, um, a guy in the, a, a guy in the Navy, in the army, when he was a private, he stuttered on so 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 on on sorry sergeant, and when he became a sergeant, he could say that, but he stuttered on on lieutenant and all the way up the the line. Or you have teachers, judges, you know, judges who will, you know, this one judge stayed at one court level. Because if he went up to another court level, he would be ha he'd have to, you know, speak from from the bench. Um, teachers, professors who have no problem when they read, right? So they'll they have to give a lecture. They'll just write it all out, and that's fine. Um, people who, uh, you know, some I look at, one guy said, uh, I don't stutter with people that I I don't know. You know, strangers I have no trouble with. It's when I can get to know you that I'll, I'll begin to stutter. You know, it's, it's, uh, people tend to kind of put everybody stutters in the same, in the same box. Uh, but the, the experiences, experiences with it um, can vary, you know. And uh, again, um, I have a friend who's a journalist. Um, in fact, he won a, uh, might have won a MacArthur Award at one time. He's a freelance journalist. He works out of, uh, he teaches a course at Duke, I think. He, um, he, he studied pretty severely and he, he went into uh, journalism and he just got tired of, you know, walking up to the desk and, you know, at whatever event he was at and he had to introduce himself at the press table and he just got, tired of you know having to struggle over his his name um and then he said well and he thought about quitting and he said well you know i can either do what i love and stutter or i can do what i don't love and stutter <laughs> it, it's going to be, be there um he also said that um, an editor 
that he worked for. Um, it's like his first job, an editor hired him. Um, and and I, well, they went out for a beer or something and, and Barry said, you know, can, can I ask you what, what, um, well, why did you, uh, why did you hire, hire me? I, I know what I just sounded like on the phone and in the interview. What made you, um, you know, take a chance on, on me? And the editor said, you know, I, I figured that anyone who, you know, had uh, a challenge, you know, of uh, the challenge of stuttering like you had and struggled with that, I figured anybody, anybody like that is somebody who, uh, who must be really determined and driven. And, you know, that's the kind of uh, person I wanted working for me, you know. Um, so as you say, I could uh, go on for a long time. I uh, <laughs> tell stories. I was with the Stuttering Project for 15 years. I edited the monthly newsletter through all that time. Um, I've been at um, about 500 support group meetings. I never missed my local support group me meeting. Uh, I've been at conventions in uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, Australia, Japan, uh, Germany. Um, we um, are the national convention we had every year was just a miraculous event. Um, you know, people would come to the con convention and just let go for the first time in their lives. Um, it was really a, a beautiful thing to see when they finally felt free to kind of let go of all the, you know, the guilt and the, and the shame that they, they had. Um, so, uh, you know, and I've, I've had thousands, I've called thousands of people on the phone. And, uh, so I could tell, you know, stories all day. <laughs> um, it, it's, fa it's a fascinating, I always, um, I always had a worry after I put out the newsletter, I figured, well, now we said everything there is to say about stuttering. What are we, what are we going to do next, next month? But there was always something else. There was always a different, another story. Um, some sad, some funny, some very, very funny. Um, uh, <laughs> um, the, um, uh, but it was, it was, uh, it's a, a fascinating thing. Um, what else? Um, there's a number of noted people who studied. The first being Mo Moses, of course, if you know the Bible, um, Moses was, um, after Yahweh told him out of the burning bush to go tell Pharaoh to yet let his people go, the first thought Moses had, I mean, he didn't even kind of say, whoa, the burning bush. Now, the first thought he had was, no, sorry, can't do it. He said, can't do it. You got to get somebody else. He said, I'm slow of speech or whatever the tra translation is. And, <laughs> and Yahweh says, oh, listen, you, you know, you know who you're talking to here. I, I, I think I can take, take, take care of that. <laughs> Moses basically says, oh, I've, no, I've tried everything. I know it isn't going to work. <laughs> but he, um, he tells him to take Aaron with it. Um, the, uh, the guy who founded the National Study Project, he, he called his son Aaron. Uh, he was Jewish too, but um, he took Aaron with him and Aaron did his talking for him for a while. And then Moses, you know, got... Uh, more confidence in himself, I, 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 I guess. Um, a lot of writers have stuttered. Uh, John uh, 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 Updike, uh, Somerset Maugham, his um, novel of, of, of human bondage, where he's dealing with a club, club foot, and he's just, you know, he stays awake at night just wishing that this club foot would go away somehow. And he, he prays one Lent, he prays 
all night. It's the Easter Sunday. I know on Easter Sunday I'm going to wake up and my club foot's going to be gone. And because um, he said that if you have, he read, if you have faith, God will grant you, if you have enough faith, God will grant you anything you want. So um, he just prayed and prayed and prayed and believed that, you know, it was going to go away and it didn't. Uh, no, Somerset Maugham was, he, he even worked as a spy later, I think, for the, for the British. Um, but um, I think he's kind of a cranky guy, too. Um, but uh, Lewis Carroll stuttered. Um, there's a report that Aristotle might have stuttered. You know, there's a, we made a mistake once. I think we put Charles Darwin on our poster of famous people who stutter. It probably wasn't him. His grand grandfather uh, was called Erasmus D D D Darwin, and I think Erasmus and Darwin both often find themselves on the list. <laughs> when I don't think they, they he could have done it, especially when it runs in the family. But Erasmus Darwin, his grandfather, was a very noted medical do D D D doctor of his time. And it was also had a very notable stutter. Um, as a report, I, Isaac Newton may have stuttered. Maybe that's why he stayed in his in his room so much. Um, what else? Uh, I I do you know I moved from the um, National Stuttering Project. It was called. I still think of it like that. It's now the National Stuttering Association. After I left, they changed the name of it. Um, and I moved on to, um, uh, I moved on to, um, work. I started a, I founded a group for just for young people who, who stutter a parent, uh, who became a later became a speech language pathologist in New York. She and I started this group and we called it, it's called friends, the national association of young people who st stutter. And um, that's been great. And we have a, you know, I don't do much with it, but we have a wonderful convention every year. And to see these kids, you know, come out and uh, just let go on the, on the dance floor. So Saturday night is, uh, is really a, a beautiful thing, thing to see. You know, I, I one thing I'll mention, I I'd often start off, I'd start off mentioning is that, the words we use are very important. Um, you probably remember when you were growing, we were growing, you were, we were younger. If there was a guy down the street who had an alcohol problem, he was a drunk, right? Ah, that guy's a drunk. Um, as if that's everything he is, you know, and it's, it, there's, you know, implied in that is he's an awful human being, you know, he just let himself go and, um, you know, we've, we've grown up, you know, we say somebody has an alcohol problem or they abuse alcohol. When I used to take students, I taught at Archbishop, I taught high school for 40 years. And when I took students from Reardon down to, um, to uh, St. Anthony's, uh, they had a education program down there and they do service in the, the Tenderloin and have lunch with the guests. Um, they, they, they were really good. They were, they referred to people as, um, not an addict, but somebody who's addictively ill or, um, a, a person who is homeless or I actually like the word houseless better, right? What they're missing is a house. Uh, they may, they may actually have a live within a home, a community, but, um, you know, the words are very important so that, you know, from the very first days of the stuttering pro project, we're very careful never to use the word stutterer because that tends to, uh, it's just not an accurate de description, right? I stutter, uh, but it's not everything I am, right? But if you tend to grow up, you know, the kid in your class, the kid in your class, there's the, uh, the nerd or the stutterer or the this or the that. And it, it tends to kind of sum up everything the person is and the one thing that they do. 
but stuttering says nothing about about me. The fact, if you know that I stutter, you really don't know anything else but that. You know, I could be um, Mahatma Gandhi. You know, I could have the you know wisdom and and um, confidence and kindness and intelligence. You know, uh, abound. Or, or I could be a complete jerk. You know, you really don't know know that. They did, there was a very strong myth about uh, stuttering. That the uh, there was a very strong belief that um, people who stutter are more intelligent, right? That we score higher on IQ tests, whatever the hell those things um, that measure. And it uh, is a nice myth, but it probably wasn't true. You know what it's probably been based on is they always did those studies on uh, college students, right? The psychology professor would do a study on stuttering and compare it with this or that. And, and often the sophomores, you know, homo so so sophomores would be the uh, subjects of the study. And in those days, the 20s and 30s and 40s, if you stuttered and made it to college, you maybe did have, did score higher on an IQ test than somebody else. But it, it didn't, um, it, it isn't true across the, the board. Um, but I, I'm often, I try to be careful of that. I was careful of that when I taught school, you know, often to, uh, you know, um, say as a person who is homeless or a person who is how, 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 person who is how uh, how 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 houseless or um a person who has a problem with this or, or or that i think that's very very important um to do that yeah that i think that we stutter is that the um that might be the uh, the um uh, national stuttering association um their tag tagline. Uh, ours is simply uh, the friends group is simply um, for friends who wait a minute. Friends who stutter dot org. Um, there. Uh, I don't even know what time the time it is. Eleven four forty five. Um, let me, why don't we just open it up for quick questions now. Um, I'd like to find out what, uh, any, com any comments or questions you, you might, might have. Is that okay, Matthew? Uh, absolutely. So uh, raise your hand if you have a question. Although it looks like Alex is just jumping in. Yes. Um, <laughs> I was kind of impressed to learn that that there are actors who stutter in their normal life, and it occurs to me from what you were saying earlier that um, part of the problem is they don't really have to listen to themselves. They're they're doing it another part, you know. They're listening to Macbeth and and repeating what Macbeth says. They don't have to put the words together themselves. And in a sense, it's it's not them talking. Would you would you agree with that? I, you know, I, I, again, I don't think it's, um, you know, the, the problem doesn't feel like, um, you know, how much I'm going to stutter. Um, yeah, it, it might have something to do with how I'm, yeah, certainly how I'm feeling, how I'm looking at myself at the, the moment. For example, if I have to go in and ask my manager or my boss for a raise. Or if, if a speaking situation is especially low loaded, I, I would suspect that I would stutter more in that in that case. Um, but again, um, you know, anyone uh, might um, struggle a little bit with their speech if they're feeling self conscious about some, some, some about about some, 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 something, but stuttering is a chronic thing, um, and I, I don't. Again, um, I can feel really um, on top of the world. We all do, right? 
you know, so you never had the experience, you know, some days, things, some weeks, everything is going right. You know, your, your baseball team is winning and uh, you're getting stuff, stuff done. And, and other weeks, there's just, you know, problem, you know, obligation and problems on top of each other. You can't even deal, deal with them all. So I, I don't, you know, I, I don't, um, certainly uh, the more spontaneous I am, Right. If I'm um, like, I don't, I don't stutter when I recite Shakespeare either. Very, very rarely. It might be the, um, it might be the rhythm of it, but I, I think it's more, I just love it. I just really, I'm not into, uh, I'm just really into just loving those, those words. Um, so it, it's a complicated thing um and um but uh in general you know if people like if somebody says uh yeah okay because you're nervous i said well listen you know i i'm not nervous i'm not stuttering because i'm nervous if i start to stutter i'm going to feel nervous because you know I'm, you know i'm standing there with my, my mouth open and you're wondering what the hell is going on um and uh um, so I will tell you a funny, a funny story. Um, I, I, uh, I used to travel to do work workshops a lot. Uh, and, uh, so this one day, but it thing is, I mean, most of the time I was teaching school part-time and running the stuttering project and I didn't have 15 seconds to spare during any given week. So when I went on a trip, all I wanted to do is to read my, my, uh, my, my spy novel, right? And the last thing I wanted to do is talk about stuttering with somebody on the plane, you know? Um, so with this one guy, I shared a taxi cab with this one guy and he's kind of a big fellow. And uh, so he asked me, oh, what do you do for a living? And usually I say I teach school, which is true, right? Uh, cause I don't want to get into a big discussion on stuttering. I'm going to talk about stuttering the rest of the weekend. I just, you know, want to pass on this, but you know, I guess I was feeling a little bit, um, uncomfortable and I'm going to preach to people, always preach to people. You have to advertise the fact you stutter. Don't hide it. Put it out there. People are going to feel, people are going to treat the stuttering the way you do. Right. If I look really hung up about it, then you're going to feel uncomfortable about it too. So I was feeling a little uncomfortable with this guy. So I thought, well, I'm going to practice what I preach. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, oh, I'm the director of the National Stuttering pro 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 Proper Project. <laughs> and I swear to God, he looked at me and he said, <laughs> he started laughing. He said, That's a good one. What do you really do? <laughs> And I, I, I wanted to I wanted to kiss him because I knew I could tell this story well forever, <laughs> and I it was <laughs> was one of the most enjoyable things I ever did. I reached in my wallet and I took out my business card and I showed it to him. <laughs> I felt like shit. <laughs> it was great. Um, anyway, did I answer your question, Alex? I don't know. <laughs> um, Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, because you know it is true. You know, if I'm being spontaneous, like if 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 we're driving in a car, and I'm the passenger, and there's a car coming from the left that you don't see, and I, I do, you do not have to worry about my screaming out, "Watch out!" You know, it's it doesn't. I'm not going to stutter on that. It's just kind of spon spontaneous. <laughs> But I, I knew a guy who was a was a firefighter, and they wanted to fire him because they thought his stuttering would get in the way. And he tried to prove that to them that in a situation where you know he really needed to be heard, uh, stuttering wasn't going to happen. Um, I, I don't know if he got his job or not. I do know this one guy in advertising. I really noted. Um, guy in, in Aberdeen. He got hired by this uh, company because he's had a great re reputation. 
And when he stuttered in front of the whoever, the guy said, look, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We're not gonna, I'm not gonna have somebody stuttering going out and talking about our company. And, and uh, he actually told him that he's firing him because of his speech. Yeah, the guy walked off with, I don't know how many, how much money, but a whole lot of money. This guy also had a lawyer. <laughs> And he, he took the guy to the cleaners. <laughs> okay, looks like we have uh, Dana and Jerry. Uh, okay. Have a question. So, so some of the time it sounded like anxiety contributed to it, and sometimes it didn't. I'm not clear on 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 the role that anxiety plays. Sure it does. Yeah. It, well, and, and it, does it generally make it worse? Yeah, I sure it can. Um, you know, if I'm feeling, uh, if I'm feeling so self-conscious, -con 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 um, you know, there's a, there's a school of thought that, um, there's a school of thought that, um, you stutter because you're trying not, not to stutter. That if you have no <laughs> feelings about it whatsoever, you just go ahead. And, it, you know, there's a certain sense of that. In fact, a, a very, um, popular, um, therapy is voluntary stuttering like that. And if I'm going to voluntarily stutter, it tends to, um, it makes it a whole different proper problem. Usually, you know, when I open my mouth, I'm trying not to stutter. Because I, you know, if given a choice between stuttering and not, I'd rather not. But if I'm you know, if, if I'm going to voluntarily stutter, then it really brings the bar down, you know, and it is true. If, if I go into a situation and try not, not to stutter, it, it does make it, it just puts me in a, in a, um, in a, a bad, bad, bad position. I'm going to lose that, you know, that bet. I'm, I'm going to lose, lose that. But generally in life, I don't get any more anxious than you do you know, in terms of just dealing with the, the world. Well, it sounds kind of ironic. It sounds like the more you want to not stutter, the more likely you're going to stutter. Yeah, that's true. Or so do, you can, you so, know. So does um, <clears throat> taking an anti-anxiety drug like Xanax make a difference? There are, uh, there are people that have taken, uh, tried that. There are people that use b b b b b Botox in the vocal mm -hmm. cords. They actually deaden, they kill one vocal cord and that's been known to, to work. Um, the uh, people have you know, tried almost everything. I, I know I, I did a workshop once and there were 11 people in the room that had, a, that had abused alcohol or drugs at some time because they were more fluent when they were drunk or high. One guy, whatever he had, to, he wanted to speak in front of the town council or whatever, he just went out and had a few joints and everything was fine. Uh, that never worked to work for me. Um, the, um, but uh, yeah, when I, when I taught school from the very first time, I, I never talked about stuttering on the first day. That was a point of pride with me. Because stuttering is not the most important thing about, about me. The most important thing about me in, in regards to those students is how well I teach, how caring I am. Um, so I never talked about it on the first day. I said, um, I had a, the first time my student taught, um, I, uh, well, the, anyway, so they would giggle or something. And I just wish there wasn't a girl named Lila or something in the class, you know, that I couldn't say her name. So, I, but I just, this, I just let it go. I let them giggle, whatever. And I always enjoyed the second day of class where I'd come in and I'd say, I'll put your books away. We're not going to deal with those today. We're going to talk about stuttering for the next 45 minutes, which we did. And uh, I always enjoyed that. And the kids did, did, did too. And once I got it out of, once I told them about it and, you know, it was actually a very effective thing. They got to know me very, very well. They thought I was, uh, uh, 
you know, they appreciated the fact that I shared that. And, uh, you know, they knew from then on that I, I'd have good days and bad days. I remember the first time I did it when I was student teaching, as soon as I said, we're, I said, we're going to talk about stuttering for the next 45 minutes, I couldn't help it, but my, my eyes were drawn to this kid back in the corner. His eyes got about this big. I knew immediately he was he stuttered. In fact, he came to our support group meetings later. <laughs> my, my first thought, as soon as I think I'm, I know that kid stutters. I, and I said to myself, I'm going to give him an A. Because, <laughs> you know, I can do whatever I want. Um, so, uh, you know, it was always a, in, the, in the classroom. I think, you know, that's, that was what, what I did. And it tended to work pretty well. The kids, they, they didn't. Some, some kids would make fun of it later. But very, very few. That didn't bother. It never Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Carl. Okay, hi, John. I really enjoyed your talk. I learned a bit more. I, what surprises me is, I guess, what I'm well, coming from is, you know, supposedly the story, I think it was Cicero that put pebbles in his mouth or something. The Mahmoud the Greek orator. I've, I've known people that tried that. Oh, wow. Well, my, and I had, a, I had a very good friend several years ago. I knew him. You know, I was more interactive with him when I first went to work. And one day he announced he stuttered. And I said, what? <laughs> what? And, 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 then I, and then after a while, I could sort of pick up when he had, what he had learned. With some, I saw him talk about learning how to unstutter or to be, be less, it'd be less dominant. Right. And then every once in a while, just like you said, he, it would really hit him bad, and and then he would really go on a tear. Yeah. Anyway, speak about how people learn that you know about anyway. Generally, how they get better around it besides smoking a joint, which I didn't know, and also I didn't know that all these famous actors stuttered because why would I? You know, uh, Bruce Bruce uh, Willis. Well, I'm going to finish your question, Carl, then I'll talk about one actor in particular. I'm done, so please go uh, ahead. James, James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones, uh, whose voice is so famous, he was virtually mute until he was 16 years old. He wouldn't talk at all because he stuttered so, so severely. Um, his catharsis came when, he, when he, was, he wrote a poem that was very good. And when he turned it into the teacher, the teacher said, come on, you didn't write this. I'm, I'm hoping the teacher, you know, had a, um, was gonna challenge him, you know, set it because he wanted to get up and read it. Uh, I hope he didn't just assume the guy was, you know, that he was stupid and wouldn't write, couldn't write a poem this, this good. But James Earl John said, yeah, I wrote it. He said, come on. If you wrote it, why do you get up and say it? So James Earl Jones was so pissed that he got up and he spoke. And I guess he did a good job. And that was kind of a break, a breakthrough for him. I, I don't know this for sure, Carl, but I would suspect he talked about what people do. Um, James Earl Jones is a very distinctive bass, bar baritone voice, right? I, I don't know whether he's always had that. But it could be, again, I, I don't know this, but it could be he maybe adopted that because he was more, more, more fluent. I, I've heard of people who went through high school using a, everything with a Southern accent. They could talk like that. I've, either, I've heard a speech pathologist who actually taught people to adopt a Southern twang, you know, or somebody who could imitate. Again, you know, if I'm reading Shakespeare, or uh, if I'm, do certain things work, right? I, I use an, an accent. When I, I, I was terrible and I had a, I took French in school. I was terrible in French. I'd stutter more, but uh, some people wouldn't, right? Some people might stutter in their original language and not in their second level language. 
it, it's a it's a very uh, everybody's everybody's a little bit different. But my oldest brother was a priest, and everyone asked why his voice was so. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but he had a different kind of a. Uh, he delivered his sermons in a different kind of way, and I suspect, you know, again, we didn't talk very much, but, um, you know, you just learn certain things that might that might work. Um, talk really fast, or but basically, you just learn to avoid certain words. Any other questions, um, Zem? I'm sorry, I, I, Courtney's supposed to call in. Uh, Matt's That's supposed fine. To call. I just have to make sure I uh, asked and mute him. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you so much for this lecture. It's extremely informative. And, you know, there's several questions that I have, but I guess I'll just ask one. Uh -huh. uh, when you were describing when um, stuttering episodes occur and when they do not. You say when you read Shakespeare, for example, they tend to not occur. Uh, you also said something just now that you uh, try to avoid certain words because you will tend to stutter with them, right? Like San Francisco. Uh, yeah, you also described, you know, walking in the forest and, and not stuttering. And the reason these things uh, ring a bell, all of them is because I suffer from something called social anxiety disorder, which is a neurological disorder, much like yours, I believe. Um, and the symptoms of it seem to occur exactly almost to what you do, you're describing. Uh -huh. So my question is, is there, is there some sort of a neurological connection between the two? Is, is, you know, is there a, a correlation? Well, maybe not correlation, but causality, you know? some sort of a connection between the two. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's a, a, a good question. I, you know, I think it makes us, I, I, somebody asked me, you know, if you didn't stutter, would your life be different? You know, I've been asked that a lot. And I don't think it, I think, I, I think I'd be the same person. You know, I, I think I would still, I grew up very shy. Um, Although again, I was um, confident in the classroom and I could throw a ball, uh, but um, I still grew up very, uh, um, very unsure to myself in uh, the world. And I think that would, I don't think that would have changed. I think I'm pretty much the same per person that I am, whether I stutter or not. Um, it doesn't, you know, just the way it feels. I, I, I know who I am. I'm 69 years old. So I, I know myself pretty, pretty well. And when I approach a situation, um, you know, well, especially with the experience I've had, you know, again, no one's, very few people have ever talked about stuttering more, more than I have. Again, I, you know, uh, I spent my, uh, I spent a uh, 15 years. I, I grew the National Stuttering Project. It had 186 members when I started, and it had over 4,000 when I left. So I, I worked really hard at, at it. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know that, um, cert certainly, yeah, it, I think it, it takes somebody else for me to stutter, <laughs> right? I mean, again, if I'm out in the woods and I'm just with myself, it, it doesn't happen. Um, so if you want to say that it has to be somebody there for me to stutter, yeah. But, but uh, you know, uh, I'm no more uh, socially. Socially, I, I look at myself in the world in the same way I would have if I didn't if I didn't um, stutter, I, I think. You know, the other thing that's um, weird, um, if I had a, a hard time in class sometimes, if I couldn't get San Francisco out, usually San Francisco sister, uh, Iowa. I, I never moved move to Iowa. Um, but what's, what I would do is I'd stop 
And uh, I turn to the kid in the front and say, well, 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 what am I trying to say? And he'd say San Francisco and I'd say San Francisco. This is weird thing. You don't stutter if you speak in chorus with somebody else. You also don't stutter in something you can, it's called the echo te technique. If you say something, I can repeat it immediately. If, if you say San Francisco, I can say San Francisco. See, it didn't work then, but if you said it, I, uh, it's, it's very um, bizarre kind of, kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, again, but I, I it's uh, the fact that I struggle over words um, is something that I was born, born with, you know, that's just a, um, and, um, you know, the, what choices I've made in life, uh, I don't think have anything to do with whether I, I stutter or, or not. I, I, one thing I'm really proud of, I think I was the first person to use the term stuttering community. I, I wrote an um, essay on that once um, that, uh, you know, we talk about the, the deaf community and the community of people that are blind or the hard hard of hearing community and this community and you have the uh, ethnic communities and the LGBTQI community. And I thought, hmm, I think, I, th I think we should have our own community too, right? Because everyone's always trying to, you know, deny the stuttering or they're embarrassed about it. People can't stand to hear the words, uh, you know, the word itself is, you know, well, let, let's embrace it. I say let's em embrace it. So you'll hear people talk about the stuttering community a lot now, but I think I was the first one. So I'll, 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 I will take credit for that. All right. Uh, we have a couple questions from the chat. Uh, I'm going to go yeah. real quick before we move on to other uh, people in the um, um from video. So I have one from Greg uh, who asks, uh, I think you've kind of you covered this one before, uh, but he asks, is it easier to avoid stuttering when reading a script uh, than when speaking without one? It, it totally depends on the per person. Again, somebody might stutter, not stutter at all when they read, or um, they might, uh, you know, only they might have a terrible time when they, when they read or they can talk on the phone or usually the phone is really hard. Uh, saying hello, you have to initiate that. Um, I know people, a lot of people struggle with that. They'll say hi or yeah, um, but um, no, it, it just depends on, on the, the per person. Um, I'm sure actors like Bruce, Bruce Willis, you could ask him, you know, whether, um, you know, reading from the script was easier or 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 not. But uh, in in general, it just depends on the on the on the per person. To me, I if I'm reading from a book, um, I, I'm I'm not going to be any more or less fluent. Uh, but again, if I'm reciting uh, Shakespeare, I just tend to get lost in in that. And um, maybe it's because uh, there's a you also don't stutter when you sing. So maybe it has that quality too. I like Mel, Mel Tillis, the famous country singer, who's quite open about his stuttering. Um, okay. And uh, somebody asked about reverse speech. I'm not sure what that is. Um, yeah, user, uh, that was the next one I was going to ask about. But mm -hmm. uh, just to read the whole thing so everybody on the same page uh it says something that there is something called reverse speech where backward mask messages are conveyed usually in english language and there's never been a connection to it uh to stuttering but both involve a high level of processing uh, and then they ask if you've ever heard of it so you haven't heard of it uh i haven't heard of it <laughs> so yeah it's not I, really I, helpful i'm not sure what a backward mask message is yeah um, I, I think uh, I, I, <laughs> I I think if I try to work talk back backwards, 
Um, I suspect I wouldn't stutter because I'd be too concentrating on getting that right. Um, there's, did you ever see the um, abbreviated Shakespeare Company? They, they, they do that. They do Hamlet, at the end of the play, they do Hamlet, ba Hamlet backwards. It's hysterical. <laughs> I think I've heard of him. I don't know if I've seen him. Uh, anyways, we, we now have a couple of people with their hands up. So let's go ahead and go to Chip. Hi, you spoke earlier and mentioned that there has been uh, progress on a genetic basis yeah. for stuttering. And I'm in this day and age where genetic errors often fall to you can't make this protein? Well, we can in the lab. Or there are other causes of genetic flaws which result in the brain grew wrong and can't, can't, can't get fixed. Uh, is there any research into the actual disease process from that gene? I, I, I don't know, Chip. Um, I, I wouldn't know how that would work or, or and anything. Um, I, that I leads to the I question, suspect, if, yeah, if you could fix it with a pill, Without Would a you? doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Now, people ask that often. And at, at uh, late, late at night at the uh, convention, people talked about that a lot. You know, I don't, if I had a pill, I wouldn't take it because, you know, I, I love the fact that I stutter and I uh, love you people and, and all that. Um, why would I, <laughs> why would I, again, you know, the quality of my life has been been good, and in in my my case, stuttering has added to the quality of my life, because it gave me a um, it gave me a community of people, you know, it introduced me to a community of p p people that I really got to know, and and to love, and um, I think I, I helped I was able to help a lot of p people get over. Uh, you know, the shame and guilt that stuttering was uh, inflicting their life with. So, I'm, but in my case, it was good, right? Because I had a chance to work um, with people who stutter. But, you know, why would I, why would I choose to, <laughs> you know, if, if I, if I go order, you know, if I go order a pl plane ticket or something and I don't have to stutter on San Francisco, I, I'm not going to miss that. You know, I, I just, why, why would, uh, you know, it's it, just that, uh, the ch challenge has been good. You know, it, it depends on how the, how that genetic issue, how it delivers the result of stuttering and, mm -hmm. you know, the research will tell there may be someday be such a pill. Yeah. And, and I, and I say, bring it on, you know, we have enough, uh, um, you know, Emily Dickinson said, uh, you know, she said, living is so startling. I'm surprised we have time for anything else. You know, it's, it's a living is, is, you know, you no end of the, the ch challenges we face. So why would I want one, one more? Thank you. All right. We have a question from Paul. Uh, I stuttered when I was uh, preschool. And uh, uh, I, I don't actually remember stuttering. What I remember is the taunting. And uh, it, uh, in fact, the association as to why I stuttered was that when I was maybe three or something like that, I was, uh, period when my dad was not in the room, I was rummaging through his desk drawer. And uh, uh, I picked up a coin, I don't know, remember now what, denomination it was, but uh, apparently he or somebody walked into the room and I just stuck it into my mouth and it got caught in my throat. Ooh. And uh, that led to uh, about a, lived in the open country. There, there was one doctor in the county and he was drunk more often than not. So they took me to one town, they couldn't do anything about it. So I had to drive down to, to Memphis. I grew up in the country in West Tennessee. And uh, um, it was all, my stuttering was attributed to that, uh, which probably had nothing to do with it, but uh, that was what it was assumed to be. Um, 
but then by the time I started school, I didn't stutter. So yeah. it did. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, kids. Uh, I don't know, but maybe twenty percent of kids experience some kind of speech in uh, uh, imperfection, you might say, and they tend to go go out, out of or develop out of it. My my own son yeah. son did. I would have done anything. Yeah. To, it, it, I did not. I did not want my son to stutter. Believe me. Uh, one of the, I think the best thing I ever wrote was a reflection on on that. Um, so uh, you know, one myth that that actually might have some um, some 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 validity is often people say that I stutter because I was left-handed and they made me write with my right right hand. Mm -hmm. You see, hear that a lot, and. I suspect there might be some true truth to that. You know, if you're talking about the hemispheres of, uh, of the brain and one, I think the left side is supposed to be dominant in speech. And if there's, um, if there's confusion as to what hemisphere is doing the talking, I, I don't know, but you hear that a lot. And, and uh, that may, uh, you know, that may contribute to something uh, to it, but you know, you hear it for a long time. Um, you know, it's the pit parent. Some big school of thought said it was the pit parents' fault. You know, a kid had normal disfluencies, and the parents brought their brought their attention to it, and that was it. You know, the kid then began to worry about his stuttering, and and uh, that was it. That that's uh, that made a lot of parents very nervous. That made a lot of parents experience a whole lot of guilt that they didn't have to feel. Most pediatricians, there must be one line in, in a, a pediatrician text, textbook, which says, hey, if a kid comes to you and their parents as they stutter, tell them they will, they will grow out of it. 75% of the time that turns out to be perfect advice, right? But it's not a good, a good, good thing. Right. You know, one one um, speech pathologist I know well, she's just dynamite in working with kids. And she said if a kid was trying to put on their pants and couldn't quite get it done, I mean, they're just struggling like crazy. You wouldn't stand there and let them do that. Right. You wouldn't just, you know, turn away and let them you would acknowledge it, right? Oh, you're having trouble with your pants. Why don't we, let's see what we can do, do about, about that. <laughs> Acknowledging the problems there and, and re realizing when it's going to be worse, you know, that the kids can have good days and bad days, especially when they're sick or excited, you know, learning when it's going to occur more and, and getting, the, getting the kid to acknowledge what's going on. You know, that was hard for you to say, wasn't it? You know, just it beats the hell out of ignoring it like I, I did. Like for me, right, stuttering was this mystery that nobody was the elephant in the room that nobody would, would talk to talk about. Oh, one thing, there is, is something parents can do. Um, you know, if, if uh, you know, often people trying to be nice will say uh, when you're, stuttering, why do you slow down? <laughs> One friend of mine said, what, I'm not talking slower, I'm not talking slow <laughs> enough now for you. <laughs> um, but, you know, when this, when, when, when my son started stutter, I freaked. <laughs> I thought, okay, this is a whole different bull, bull ball game now, right? We're talking about my kid. And a really close for a friend of mine, again, who was wonder, wonderful working for kids. She said, listen, you need to do two things. First of all, you have to, you have to believe that he's gonna get better. Because everybody I knew who stuttered, you know, didn't get better. You know? So you have to believe, you just believe he's gonna get better. And the other thing she said was, and slow down your speech. When you talk to him, slow down your speech 
until it sounds absolutely silly. And that works. You know, it's, it's, there is no good guarantee, but uh, kids model things, right? I mean, do you want the kid to kind of mm -hmm. slow down and, and maybe slowing, maybe that just helps the brain maybe get to get in sync. Kids, if you tell the kid to slow down, right? <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do. Then he, be, he or she begins to worry about things. And, uh, but kids model things, right? And kids will model slow speech if they, if they hear it. It, it's, it's the most effective thing that parents can, can do. There's no, no guarantee, but um, it, it, it can be that if the parents are, feel helpless, there's nothing I can do, that's one thing they, they can do. And we did. We put pillows around uh, our, the room in our apartment. And we, we played, a, we called it the pillow game. And we taught, Connor to say one one word as he jumped on each each uh, pillow. Anyway, uh, again, there's no no guarantee, but um, you know. That's uh, interesting that you say that because I, I think when I was younger, I would stutter, but only when I was like trying to talk too fast or excited, you know, and thinking oh. too fast and talking. And it, it was pointed out to me a couple of times, but you know, I haven't done that in a long time. So um. again, you know, talking like the, and teaching your kid to slow down does, it just is an effective way. Maybe it's just, you know, it helps the brain um, get in, in sync. Cause again, that's what you, you're talk to talking about. Um, and um you know, I, I, I think of it like, a, um, uh, you know, the, the, you turn on a light in a room, right? And sometimes it goes right on and sometimes it flickers. And, and you know, the, my speech t t t t tends to do that. Sometimes it's in perfect sync and sometimes it's, it's not. But uh, just, uh, you know, letting the stuttering be there, being as open as I can about it. And just trying to en enjoy the experience of talking uh, is, you know, can't uh, can't hurt. Yeah. Well, are there other, uh, I guess, cor uh, correlations with other groups or entities? Uh, there was no one else in my extended family that stuttered. I have a large, large extended family. Uh, we have fifty or sixty people at the beach. Uh, Right. And, uh, um, but you, you mentioned some that's more males than females. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it about, about, uh, yeah. Uh, five, language five choice. Uh, is it, does it happen more to English speakers than to Chinese speakers? No. Speakers? Paul, they've, they've studied every uh, society on earth and they found stuttering in every one. Except uh, I understand they thought the American Indians didn't stutter for a while. It turns out they just didn't have a word a word for it. Mm. To them, it just kind of didn't. They said no. They they found it on in every society they've ever studied, and the percentage is usually about the same, about one one uh, percent. You know, back back to Demosthenes <coughs> and the rocks in his mouth. I actually I talked to a guy who kept a stone under his tongue for three years. I don't know what effect it had, but you know, the other part of the Demosthenes stories is he, he went to the beach and he talked above the sure. roar, the roar of the waves. Right. And I think that if something was effective, it was not the rocks, it was the roar of the waves. <laughs> if I don't hear myself, I don't stutter. Did I mention that? There's, a, there's actually a, the first device that came out was called the Edinburgh Ma 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 Massacre out of Edinburgh, Scotland, Scotland. Alex, you'd appreciate this with your uh, computer work. And it would it have a um, connect your vocal cords and it would come up 
and um, you know you'd have ear it would connect with your hearing right so when you as soon as your vocal cords began to vibrate put a white noise in your ear and stuttering you you couldn't stutter I can't stutter if I couldn't hear hear myself I don't you know maybe that's when I what happens when you're out in the woods uh, uh, and you know, they showed people, people who were very severe would put this thing on and it went away. But <laughs> the other dynamic is you think everyone would go out and buy, but buy this thing? <laughs> no, a lot of people, you know what their reaction is? But they'll see the wires. <laughs> you know, like they're willing to deal, you know, with taking 30 seconds to get their name out, but they don't want anybody to see the wires. It, it's very, very bizarre. Um, I don't, you know, I, again, if I st see the other thing is stuttering hasn't had that much of an effect in my life because I don't stutter that much, really. My best, my best friend um, was said the other day, he said, you know, stuttering has had such an impact in my life because Hardy stuttered really severely growing up in Poland. I mean, he spent World War II in Poland, you know. After the war in Germany, um, they were lucky to gather enough wood to have a fire at night and they ate potatoes, um, you know, three times a day. He, he, he only went to school till he was 12, you know. He remembers walking off that last day of school because, you know, he wasn't one of the few that were gonna go on in school. He actually went into the clothing clothing industry and did really, 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 really well. But, um, you know, he, uh, he said, you know, there were days I just couldn't talk at all. Uh, but people always liked him. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I hope whatever, I don't know who asked the, the question, but I hope I answered that. Uh, I think we should move on to the Zem. Yes, um, I have, well, one and a half questions. So it okay. sounds uh, from uh, several questions that were already asked and from your answers that there is no long-term uh, pharmacological intervention that you could use to control the symptoms. There are some that, that pre preach that, yeah. Oh, okay. So so there is at least hope for that. Yeah, there's a do doctor who stutters who, uh, who does promote that. But again, you know, that's, um, uh, you know, if, if there is a, if, if I stutter severely and there is a pharma, pharmacological um, method that would, give me more control over my speech that didn't have any other su su side effects, why the hell not? You know, it's not gonna change my, you know, again, I, I, I don't think in, um, in my case, it would change uh, the quality of my life. You know, I've made, I've made choices in, in life. Uh, I've been involved in um, a lot of, uh, in politics, you know, I've been very involved in that. Um, one guy said, uh, <laughs> one guy went off to a very intensive stuttering th therapy per program, you know, um, and he came back and, and uh, he, oh man, he really, I mean, it's also very intensive. Stuttering, you're trying to change the way you walk some, 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 some time, right? They say you have to do something 10,000 10, times in order to really get it, make a habit of it. So it's really, really hard to do something, to have a therapy technique that's going to affect. Anyway, this guy went off and he came back and, and, and he was pretty much, nobody liked him when he, before he left, he came back and nobody still didn't like, they still didn't like him, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, there's, there's other things, um, you know, I've known people who are so gregarious and kind and, and, and funny. And, um, you know, you don't really, 
care whether they said it or not because they, they don't really care too much. Um, so anyway, is that? No, that's very your interesting. Full question? How about your half, your, your, your half? Well, question? this was the half actually. The full okay. question is, are there comorbidities with, that go along with stuttering? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, other illnesses that oh. occur when stuttering occurs? No. No. Okay. Not, not that I know. Okay. No, I, I do know that, uh, again, the genetic component can be very, especially in women. My, my, again, I don't, I'm sure they've done studies, but it, what I, I, if, if, a, if uh, um, a woman stutters, I think it's a sign that the genetic proneness in that family is pretty strong, right? Because the chances are only one out of five that she's going to stutter any, anyway. And uh, I think if a woman has a son, the chances are better, right? Many women I know who stutter, um, one of their children will stutter. Um, because, the, you know, the proneness is just str so stronger. Um, wow, okay, strange. There's no, nobody else has their hand up. So I'm going to try to go to, uh, yeah, general discussion. So we'll let everybody, everybody should um, be able to unmute themselves. What percentage? About one, one, one percent of adults will stutter. And again, that can be, a, that the um, um, severity can, can swing very well, widely there. But about one percent of adults, not just in the United States, but no, no country, no country uh, has more stuttering than any other. Although I would suspect that if a country is like Syria right now, I, I suspect there's more children in Syria that are growing up stuttering than maybe other places because just the uh, severity of all the um, deprivation. Mm -hmm.